Q3 FY23 earnings conference call hosted by Dollar Capital Market Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now have the conference over to Mr. Sachin Bobade from Dollar Capital Markets Private Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Lizan. On behalf of Dollar Capital, I welcome you all to the Q3 FI23 earnings conference call of Uflex Hinton. Hope you all and your family members are staying safe and healthy. From the management side, we have with us uh, Mr. Rajesh Bhatia, Group CFO and President, Mr. Anantashri Chaturvedi, CEO of Flex Films Limited International, Mr. Apurva Shri Chaturvedi, uh, Director EU Operations and Sustainability. Now I hand the floor to the management for their opening remark, and then we would have question and association. Over to you, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Bhatia, may you please proceed? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, good afternoon to all of you, and welcome to Q3 uh, conference call for the earnings uh, for the for the quarter three. Uh, overall. Uh, you know, this quarter I'll split into two parts. One is India, uh, where we have seen a very strong growth momentum, uh, and the offshore business, which is basically packaging film business, where we have, we have seen some softening, and you know we'll explain you the reasons uh, for the same, and uh, then you know it can be followed by uh, Q and A. So let's first. You know, uh, look at the positive aspect, which is uh, you know India business, where we see uh, a growth uh, of about uh, volume overall growth of about 13 percent this quarter, and the packaging uh, business has seen a growth of about 34 uh, percent of that. Uh, you know the the revenue for the uh, for the business is up about 20 percent. EBITDA is uh, uh, is maintained, and uh, so that uh, basically sums up uh, you know the the India business where we've seen a strong momentum in the packaging uh, business volume, which comprise of the flexible packaging as well as the uh, aseptic uh, packaging part. Uh, of our our business, and uh, if we come to the uh, consolidated numbers, yes, on a three month basis, we, we on a quarterly basis, while the income, uh, the revenue is almost maintained and it's marginally up by about 0.6% to about 3,496 crores, uh, but the EBITDA has suffered. Uh, to about uh, 429 crore without any exchange fluctuation, and which we compare with the, on a YOY basis, it is down by about 28 percent. Uh, this quarter, we've seen an unprecedented uh, foreign exchange uh, losses, both on account of uh, devaluation by uh, by Egypt by about 22.3 percent on 27th of October. And uh, also some of the translation and reinstatement losses again, which are which are most of which are are notional because of but you know because we report our numbers in the rupee format and you know translate from all the currencies first to dollar and then from dollar to rupee. Uh, we've seen a huge impact of about aggregating to about 236 crores uh, in this quarter. And uh, you know that's the prime driver for the for, uh, for the reason why you know this quarter's numbers do not look good. Again, I say that most of that 
is is notional only uh, the exchange losses and uh, uh, we we've seen some deep growth in the offshore business uh, uh, largely uh, because of the two facts one uh, you know uh, we had forgotten during the covid period that what is the normal and uh, so one that realization now that covid is uh, behind us is, is is back to to the reality and you know normally uh, pre covid the period of october to december is always soft uh, you know as compared to some of the other quarters so that realization that reality check is now setting in uh, but you know this reality check was also accentuated by uh you know uh, two factors one is the russia ukraine war by, by, which led to a huge increase in uh, in the in the in the energy cost for for us as well as for the general consumers and obviously it hit the it hit the consumption as the consumer had to choose between uh eat and heat and uh, particularly this winter and uh, you know their disposable income they had to realign in terms of the higher energy cost uh, what the household had to pay and also the higher emi if, uh, if you know there has they have taken any loans for housing or otherwise so there there has been a redistribution of the of the income and you know some of the discretionary spends have taken a taken a hit and by was by Uh, and as a reason thereof, uh, we've seen some deep growth uh, in the volume. Uh, the second reason is also as the as the Fed aggressive policy, they are trying to combat inflation. Uh, we've seen in some of the you know, uh, and that has impacted uh, you know that uh, those very aggressive fiscal policies ultimately you know. Uh, affect the consumption at some stage or the other uh, but more than that i think uh, you know couple of countries where we where we are operating like nigeria egypt and all that this dollar strength has ultimately led to uh, you know a huge availability issues uh, with respect to the dollar and uh, you know uh, the, the industries or the businesses which are dependent on the imported uh, raw material uh, and you know they, they sell locally uh, they were finding it very difficult to procure dollars for the for the offshore procurement they buy ultimately you know if their volumes are affected and you know it's a it's a whole cyclic uh, it's a whole chain so somewhere you know it had to affect people like us also where if the overall economy is not doing so well so the consumption also uh, you know uh, gets uh, affected i think this uh, uh, having said that you know this is the quarter where we see the maximum impact of this uh, these losses exchange as well as the some of the deep growth in the, in the packaging film business globally and uh, um, we will uh, we foresee that the current quarter is uh, will still be better in the indian operations as compared to the previous quarter as currently we are operating at about uh, uh, 130% capacity utilization in our septic packaging business in the month of january and the season has just started so we see a very strong momentum in that business as well as a flexible packaging business which in the month of january uh, has reported the highest ever volume ever and so these two businesses are, uh, are, are quite stable and that's what uh, you know uh, diversification of the revenue streams in india uh, has been uh, you know very well demonstrated in this quarter whereby the Films business suffered in terms of its uh, its uh, quantity, uh, its profitability, while the other businesses, the septic packaging, flexible packaging, inks, adhesives, chemicals, cylinders, they've all made up for uh, for for what was uh, the lower contribution uh, by by the film business. 
Now, offshore business is only a pure packaging film play, and that's where uh, you know we see uh, you know once that business is down for the reasons I already explained. Uh, so we we were there. uh you know uh, coupled with the exchange uh, uh, losses i think uh, that business has not done so well during this quarter as it was doing in the previous six quarters and uh, but nothing nothing that you know we are we are so worried about our market share everything else uh you know we taking the opportunity to go back in the in some of the difficult times and surely i think uh, in another quarter or two we will be back on track in terms of our uh, offshore business and the india business will continue momentum uh, uh, both in the packaging uh, uh, flexible packaging as well as in the aseptic packaging and also some of the intermediary businesses uh, especially the chemicals uh, and uh, and and cylinders so that in nutshell is 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 the uh theme for the quarter three performance and uh i think uh, what is important to note is that uh you know while uh you know the industry if you see all other uh, players also they reported also a lower number uh, both for the india as well as the offshore businesses but that's where you flex gets differentiated from the rest of the players as the re- other businesses related businesses revenue streams have compensated uh for uh you know the loss of uh, uh, you know revenue and the profitability in its uh, in its uh, in, in the packaging film business no doubt the packaging film business is the largest for us and the other businesses are much smaller as compared to this but you know wherever we see an opportunity to uh, to do better uh, we will we uh, will do that and uh, we are looking to further de bottleneck our existing uh, aseptic packaging business to take it close to a 12 billion pack per year uh from the 9 billion tax a year run rate currently at which we are operating and uh the the order momentum is uh you know sort of pretty strong there both in the domestic markets and as well as in the offshore markets for this business and there have been months where you know when the india season goes down uh you know earlier there have been situations where you know you your plant capacity utilization drops drastic uh, drastically especially in the months of august and september onwards uh but this year uh, we've seen we we done uh you know even in those uh, uh you know non seasonal months also we've done better because we grew our export markets and as a result of which now we expect that you know in in the year uh, 23 24 we will see much of uh, not much of seasonality uh, going forward into this business as we as we ramp up our, our export market uh, even at a 12 billion tax a year market i would have reasons to believe that you know we have uh, order book to to uh, you know serve the customers and the market has been has been pretty good for both for the flexible packaging as well as for the uh, for the packaging business so that's in nutshell is the key takeaway and uh, uh, from the the uh, from UFX and we are open to any any questions on on our performance for the for the quarter thank you thank you Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants will request to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the questions are assembled. The 
first question is from the line of Saurabh Sharma, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello, I'm audible, sir. Yes, you are audible. Yes, uh, hello, Vaitaji. So, I, my question was regarding the receptive packaging and why uh, segmented information for that is not being provided, even though engineering activities is being provided, which is at currently at a much uh, smaller scale than effective packaging. I think there, what we are doing is there, we are, uh, uh, you know, guided by the ACA. And there's, uh, you know, all the packaging activities and the packaging sales is, is taken as a packaging activity. And uh, engineering is, of course, a separate activity as, as uh, required to be reported under the uh, under under the laws of the land, and that's how we, we distinguish. But uh, we also shy away from giving you a number on uh, on, on on these two separately, uh, being a bit confidential information. But you know, we we happy to tell you the plant capacity utilization uh, levels, and you know the capacity. So in a way, you you are you are, uh, there's enough information for you to derive as to, you know, uh, what kind of a growth and the momentum uh, we have in that business. Uh, but if the profitability becomes a problem, uh, so uh, the revenue, of course, is, is, is one can one can arrive at, but profitability of that 20% EBITDA is something that has been guided earlier, but then there are all kinds of variables that keep changing, considering the fact that Salmon plant is a separate standalone entity and uh, isn't uh, really enmeshed in the other operations of uh, the company. And uh, it having achieved uh, a particular scale right now, so, you know, it's just uh, maybe a pointer, maybe for the management to sort of consider going ahead. I understand uh, there is confidentiality involved there, but uh, if, uh, you know, I mean, it could just give a sense of the profitability and that being a separate, because uh, from your uh, commentary also, it's being uh, it's being referred to as a separate growth growth driver. So it, it it gives you know if it's a private company, if it looks as a private company, it's a separate issue. But uh, for shareholders, minority shareholders, uh, it becomes a bit of a bit of a bit of an added incentive to sort of uh, um, you know be invested in the company. So that was my little key thing about uh, the segmented information. The second question would be, how does the company plan to plan to sort of, you know, uh, take care of the debt situation going ahead. Uh, this quarter has been particularly harsh uh, profitability point of view from the profitability point of view. So how does the company intend to handle the debt situation going ahead, uh, assuming things uh, do not look up for some time? Because I'm sure uh, in addition to the open lines of debt, there are also covenants that are not... Uh, so can you concise your question? Can you can you concise yeah. your question? In the question yes. so 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 what is, what is the what does the company plan to do about the debt uh, situation going ahead if if profitability remains uh, a problem in the in the near future in terms of debt covenants which are not public right now so what does the company plan to how does the company plan to handle the debt situation okay. debt covenants uh, so I think the covenants uh, uh, are currently all under control. Uh, there are no issues with respect to any any governments. Uh, in the in our European businesses, yes, uh, when when we look at the uh, trailing twelve months, uh, you know, uh, we we still find uh, we may have some issues, uh, uh, you know, on a on a quarterly number isolation basis. And whenever there are such uh, scenarios, I think the bankers do understand that, and we will be we hopeful that uh, you know we will get uh, waivers from them because they also understand the situation in 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 the European territory, particularly where the where the cost of energy has hit us, uh, not only us but across all the industries. And you know there is a there is an impact on the consumption because because of it. So they are very well supported uh, of uh, of if there are any uh, you know sort of covenants uh, breach. 
uh, we uh, you know uh, we we don't as we said that we expect that q2 uh, onwards you know we will have uh, 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 in the positive growth territory in our offshore uh, business as well uh, but uh, you know in case so there are uh, uh, there are situations which prolong uh, for the reasons which are not under our control i think our uh, our entire uh, stakeholders uh, you know which are debt uh, uh, lenders i think they fully understand that fact that you know this may lead to uh, some breach in the local governance which they are ready to uh you know sort of uh, give us uh, some more time to comply with this course okay all right thank you buddy thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question say please press star and one the next question is from the line of rushab shah from anubhuti advisors llp please go ahead uh thank you for the opportunity uh sir can you give the exact volume numbers for this quarter which one uh absolute are uh, packaging volumes i think the last quarter they were 1.5 lakh tons no so this quarter we did uh, sales volume of close to about 140000 140000 tons yes so oh, that could that could be approximately 6 7% that decline on a sequential basis that could be correct yes yes yes, yes. okay okay and with respect to our uh, dharwad project uh, uh, the buffet addition of 60000 tons per annum when can we expect that to come online i think uh, we doing uh, you know the trial runs that there Uh, we had some situation on account of power over there. Uh, we were currently we we are on uh, you know sort of uh, our power which is the self generated power. Uh, but given you know the mechanical convention, I told you has been has been completed for some time. Uh, the power issue is is still getting resolved, but you know uh, by end of March. First week of April or so, I think we'll be up and running commercially on that facility. Uh, sorry, sorry, I missed the number. Date five when? End of March or uh, first week of April, we'll be up and okay. running with those. Okay. okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. And just on the finance cost number, I think this quarter sequentially we see the finance cost has come in higher by twenty six percent. So, can you just uh, uh, divide the mix that how much came in actually from higher finance cost and uh, and if you can uh, uh, share the absolute uh, debt number which is outstanding as of thirty first December. So, I think the uh, the debt number as on thirty first of December, what we have there. of then i is including working capital and long term it is about uh, net this is the net debt is about 4460 crores 4460 Yeah. Okay. So uh, we were uh, working capital this includes long term this includes working capital everything and the uh, uh, less of the uh, you know the cash balance is uh, what we see okay okay got it so you uh, we were planning to reduce debt by uh, approximately 500 crores during this fiscal so uh, would that be done in uh, the fourth quarter itself or uh, this would uh, go in uh, next fiscal no so i think we got it wrong uh, what we said that there is Uh, amortization of the debt, which is as per the agreed amortization schedule with the bank, so that is happening on its own on a quarter to quarter basis. So that's the number. Uh, but as we complete our Bharwad project, as we uh, uh, you know sort of spend more monies on our Panipat project, so you will see that you know more or less 
you know those additional debt will get added on to to the debt which is already being repaid and that's where if you see on a quarter to quarter basis the net increase in the debt is is not too much okay okay so uh uh do we expect that to further uh, increase from this level maybe uh, around guidance it, yeah, it will it will it will go up slightly uh, by you know there will be repayment there will be fresh debt added so uh, you know i think uh, based on the current plans that we uh, that we have we do not uh, expect any any debt num- any substantial numbers to be added on so what gets added on uh is uh, almost the same number uh is what we are looking in terms of our amortization payments so uh you know there's nothing any alarming uh, on this account which which will get added on the debt numbers makes sense makes sense because after bharwad and uh, anitad i believe there are no significant kickbacks coming up except some small recycling plants correct no sir? yeah 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 sir. Okay, okay. So just last one question. So any uh, guidance on the margin front may be going ahead. Maybe next one or two quarters are challenging. But any broad uh, long-term margin guidance which you can uh, share with us? Mm, difficult at this stage. I think we have to see the Q4, uh, especially in terms of uh, offshore business. Uh, India also there has been some uh, extra capacity which has come, so it's finding its place in the market. So the market is, uh, you know, uh, readjusting itself. Uh, I think in the next quarter, uh, you know, I will not see any huge impact of some of these uh, on the on the margins, except that you know some of the exchange losses and all that. So, uh you know may not be to that magnitude uh having said that i think the q4 will set the tone for the for the fy24 and that's a better time to you know give you guidance for fy24 uh the first and the foremost is that you know uh, we should look to uh, recover the lost volume uh while we know that the overall volume has shrunk i think the guidance uh, from the top management is to is to uh, you know sort of strengthen the market share uh, you know uh, uflex is much stronger whether financially or otherwise in terms of uh, you know gaining and retaining the market shares uh, you know in which other markets we are so the whole momentum is that you know whatever are the numbers that were lost in this quarter for the volumes i think we can make up for that and then look for uh, you know uh, as to what should be our margin uh, uh, as to how the how do the margin settle in each of the territories that we operate in so currently i am abstaining from giving any guidance because uh, you know uh, but i can tell you that you know the january month has been or the middle up to middle of february it's been much better than the last quarter in terms of the numbers okay so any uh, color on current bopex spreads have that been remained at the, have that those remained at the same level as of 3q or there is uh, some improvement no it's at the same level okay thank you so much sir all uh, all the best thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one The next question is from the line of Kaushik Pudar from KB Capital Markets Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, in your BOPP and uh, uh, BOPET, there is a good amount of capacity that has come. So, will that uh, will not will not will that not result in uh, margin reduction even next year also? I don't think so. There is any more room left to reduce the margin uh, in. uh in both of them i think uh, you know whatever is the demand side is there uh you know people will look to uh you know realign their production uh you know because if the market is of size x you produce 1.3x 
Uh, you know, that's not going to get a drop just because, you know, uh, you produce and you, you sell cheaper and all that. So I think uh, the margins have hit the lowest, uh, num- uh, you know, uh, level in, in the Q2, uh, in the Q3. And uh, here on, it's only a positive development that we are expecting. Uh, if not on the margin side, if not in Q4, uh, definitely in Q1. So can we take it the 13% margin if you leave aside this um, exchange loss? That is the bottom most uh, margin we can expect from you? I think if we take out the exchange loss for the nine months period, we are at about 14.5% for the nine month period. So, uh, you, you know, I think for the year as a whole also, we should, uh, we should be slightly better than uh, this. So, uh, but next year, uh, I think we'll be able to give you any guidance only after, uh, you know, uh, what we see, what we do in Q4, uh, you know, only then we'll be able to guide. But uh, for the nine month period, it's a 14 and a half percent of beta margin, excluding any exchange losses. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, but if you see a beta after the exchange, yes, it is about 13.1 percent for for uh, for the nine month period. Okay, okay. So 14% is the bottom most we can expect at a normal level. I, I, I mean, what's, uh, at first we can expect uh, 14% to be the margin. The beta for the quarter is lower. The beta hmm. for this quarter obviously is lower as compared to the first two quarters. Hmm. So uh, putting that, plugging, if you know, we were to replicate our performance, uh, what we had in this quarter itself, so we are looking at an EBITDA of about uh, say 2,100 crores uh, for the for the year as a whole, uh, with a with a top line of uh, uh, this uh, 11 divided by three into four. Uh, so about 13.8 percent or so. So they'll be. That's what it looks like without any exchange, uh, uh, you know, okay. negative or positive, whatever the way is. Okay. And when is this uh, expansion of uh, your aseptic packaging to uh, 12, 12 billion uh, units uh, going to take place? That will take time. So not in this season, uh, definitely in the next season. We have. But currently, your run rate is nine billion units, is it, on a monthly basis, uh, on a yearly basis, on an annualized basis? So uh, that's based on uh, more or less forty-five days of operations uh, in the in the calendar 2023. Okay, and this straw for this uh, paper-based straw for this uh, Tetra packs, have you been able to uh, uh, make it, uh, operationalize it? So those challenges are are taken care of, and there is no effect of that on on the business. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Chirag Singhal from First Water Capital. Please go ahead. Taking my question. Uh, so first question is on the Asepto. So you mentioned that uh, you are increasing the capacity from nine to twelve billion packs in coming the next season. But given the growth that you have posted in Asepto, uh, you know post commissioning of the second line, even this new three billion packs, you know, may run out in next one to two years. So, are you already considering any expansion plans in terms of brownfield, greenfield for the acceptor division? Nothing on the anvil as of now. Uh, uh, so r- right now, you know, uh, you know what we are concentrating is on the low hanging uh, fruits, and uh, and the lowest hanging is that you know if you can do from nine to twelve. Uh, 
uh, without any any substantial uh, investment. I think that's the that's the way to go. Uh, nothing firmed up on on any subsequent green or brownfield extension as of now. Okay, and uh, what about the margins? In the past, you mentioned that uh, Septo, uh, you know, uh, generates roughly about 20 to 25 percent of a bit margin. So going forward, also uh, we can expect about 20 percent of so 20 percent. So 20% uh, uh, is a sustainable uh, margin going forward. Yeah, looks like uh, you know there'll be dips and ups and downs, uh, season versus non-season. But uh, you know, uh, a blended average of 20% would be a good estimate. Okay, okay, uh, right. So my next question is on the uh, interest cost. So, uh, interest cost, especially if I look at the concern and the standalone, that has gone up substantially. Uh, so, it is 40 crores in the previous quarter, which has gone to roughly 65 crores in the Q3. So, is this because of the higher cost of debt or because I think uh, most of your expansions in the overseas have been commissioned. Uh, none of the expansion would have been commissioned in Q3. So, uh, is this because of the cost of debt going up? Both factors. One is the cost of debt has gone up, uh, especially you know if you look at Nigeria where we had uh, it's almost doubled. Uh, you know the cost of debt. Then we look at you know even uh, you know the the dollar denominated or the euro denominated debt there. Uh, you know while we spread sticks, but uh, you know the SOFR or other uh, benchmarks have gone up. So uh, first is that, and second is, you know, we commissioned the CPP facility in Darbar, we commissioned the CPP in Dubai as well. So those two extra capacities coming on screen, and wherever there was a CapEx related, you know, those things having come on screen. So that uh, that, that uh, interest cost uh, has, been, has been added. Uh, but a very large part of the, uh, you know, uh, increase this quarter has been on account of uh, Nigeria increasing its interest rate substantially. So, on an overall level, uh, if you can give the cost of debt that we can work with for the coming fiscal, uh, as in the Indian business as well as in the overall uh, overseas business, what will be the cost of debt? Mm -hmm. So, if you see current quarter, uh, you know, on a consolidated basis, our debt are uh, it's 133 crores. So if we uh, do, divide it by 4500, so it's about 12 percent. And India India debt rates have also gone up. Uh, there, there also there is some impact, but, but because we have not added any any substantial debt in India. So India numbers is 45 crore this quarter. Uh, last quarter was 41 crore. A year before it was 40 crore. So the impact is impact is not much in the India business because you know the debt number there itself is uh, is not very uh, substantial. Uh, so, but in India, whatever is the impact of the debt, you know that may be largely because of the increases we've seen in the last two quarters and the CPT uh, at Dharwar, uh, you know, coming into the commercial production and that, that number, uh, you know, adding to the interest cost. Okay, this 500 crores of debt that you mentioned, this is the uh, net debt, uh, not the gross debt. This is the net debt. Okay. Okay, all right. And uh, how are you looking at uh, spreads in, especially in the overseas, uh, uh, you know, operations? Because uh, as far as I understand, most of the booked capacities that have come up is in China and India, especially. So, uh, are you seeing like stronger spreads in the overseas operations? And do you feel that it has bottomed out, and you're already seeing some sort of an improvement, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in the coming quarters? I think that's what I said to begin with. Uh, looks like that Q3 was the uh, was the worst. Uh, uh, a lot of factors came together to 
you know uh, so I, I i'll have to use the word probably the entire universe conspired uh, to to uh, you know uh, to reduce the margin uh, you know we had uh, we had the raw material cost going down uh, obviously you carry some inventory all the time so there are inventory losses which are built into this uh you know the the raw material prices came down so did the finished goods prices uh the consumption came down with less to you know uh the price still the more pricing pressures so i think everything the extra capacity came on came on soon and uh, people you know all everybody vying for the for a reduced uh shelf space so all that has happened in the uh, in, in the q3 and uh, probably uh, that's what i said earlier uh, this seems the world seems to be over and q4 and q2 q1 onwards we look for better uh, volumes as well as the margin both in india as well as uh, offshore okay all right so there's one last question uh, uh, before i join back in the queue uh, uh, this Thirty crores of total forex impact, uh, which we saw in Q3. So, was this emotional impact, or uh, uh, I mean, was this like a non-cash loss? I think most of it is non-cash loss. So there are there are you know uh, like Egypt devalued its currency twice in the last twelve months. So that eighty-five crore, eighty-four crore impact is is taken as an exceptional item. uh but the impact on the currency uh on account of two reasons then come one is the translation losses when you work in a particular country in the local currency and then you convert that into dollar and then from that dollar to rupee to your reporting currency so those kind of uh, things are mostly uh you know notional in nature because you know your effective currency uh remain the local currency and uh, you know uh you you have the surpluses there uh which you keep on reinvesting there in those markets uh you know a digit kind of a devaluation ultimately helps you also because uh, any devaluation largely means while it has an impact of a shorter tenor on your numbers uh but you know it insulates you from any on slot of uh, uh you know imports uh, into that uh, imports into that country so uh i think we not too worried about uh, you know because we work in all these countries so uh and you know we we have that uh, we have to take uh, those currency fluctuations into into our side because we simply can't work uh, in the dollar like in india you can't you can't sell to a customer based on the uh, in the dollar value uh, and the so is with egypt so is with mexico so is with nigeria in some of these territories work uh, but if you convert those numbers back into the dollars obviously you know the things will look uh, in a in a, in a, in a uh, you know from a different perspective uh, but most of this would be uh, you know a substantial part of this is notional only okay all right thanks for answering the questions thanks thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star and one we move on to the next question that is from the line of abhimanyu rathor from kc advisors please go ahead yeah thank you for the opportunity so my question is on the aseptic packaging business so sir given the growth that the business is division is registering and the margin profile i just wanted to understand that is there any internal discussion on you know delisting the uh, business as a, as a separate entity or a subsidiary or you know what are the plans for the division going ahead i think uh, you know in in given the current size of the business uh, you know uh, we don't think that there will be any opportunity here to you know keep to separate this business uh you know we we will surely look at the markets for the for the next uh, uh, couple of years and uh, you know if there are any capacity expansions that we announced to 
to ensure that you know we gain we uh, we we look forward to strengthening our position in india as well as the kind of uh, you know impetus we got in the overseas markets so uh, at that point in time when it becomes a really a substantial business yes they may be thought but if you ask me really at this stage uh, no there's no way that you know we you will consider uh, you know uh, separating this business uh makes sense uh thank you so much for the answer and all the best for the coming quarters thank you so much thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may yeah, please press star in one the next question is from the line of rishab shah from anubhuti advisors llp please go ahead Uh, so just one follow up question so any uh, uh, progress with respect to the listing of i can't hear you uh okay it's audible now hello 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 yeah yeah so any update with respect to a uh, uh, listing of our overseas subsidiary oh okay so i think we've been in touch with our bankers and uh, uh currently there does not seem to be any opportunity but going forward uh, in q3 of uh, the calendar fy23 uh, we will again reassess the situation and that remains on cards for us and you know with that we've done a lot of work in the past uh, you know we it the audits or other things uh, you know we we've, we've done enough and as and when there is an opportunity we will be sure to look at those markets but q3 is the earliest uh, you know when when i say q3 is uh, 24 uh, you know uh, f3 f524 is is what i am mean looking at okay quarter 3 of f524 yeah quarter 3 of f524 okay perfect thank you thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one is there are no further questions i now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments thanks everybody for uh, uh for being on the call and uh, you know to uh, we we really uh you know uh, a bit person uh you know uh, surprised by you know what happened in q3 in terms of the packaging things business especially overseas and uh, fortunate that you know because of the diversified nature of the business the elsewhere the business was strong uh there are exchange losses which are not in our control and there are translation uh losses as well as the losses when you convert the uh, you know the liabilities uh, from a certain currency into the reporting currency which is the rupee uh, uh which are which are again mostly the notional losses uh so i don't uh, you know sort of i i look at this quarter's performance uh from a positive perspective only uh, looking at the packaging business electrical packaging which has not been doing so well in a few years a septic packaging business which is uh, which is breaking the barriers and as we look at you know finding opportunities from the existing plant as to how do we how do we increase and utilize this plant more to deliver more uh to the offshore markets uh you know where affected uh affected business is now making a good uh, uh strong hold uh, so that you know the non seasonable uh, when when there is a non season in india you know we still able to uh you know utilize the plants fully uh so there have been more positives there have been negatives which are which are more market driven and situations arising out of the aggressive us fed policy as well as the russia ukraine uh conflict uh and which we which we have reasons to believe that another given another quarter 
uh, you know, even those numbers will be back on the track. Uh, that's what, in nutshell, is the Q3 about and the guidance for the Q4. Beyond that, currently, we are not in a position to, you know, sort of give you any further, uh, you know, uh, insights. Uh, we can only say that, you know, in terms of the business, the India business, uh, you know, is insulated and is from the, from the rest of the world currently, and, you know, will continue to do so uh, for the Q4 as well as for the, for the FY24 as well. Okay, great. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, on the call. Thank you. Edison Jennifer, on behalf of Dollar Capital Markets Private Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.